Hi guys, it's Dylan from Bijou Diamond Jewelry in London with another watch review and today we're going to compare two icons of the Rolex collection and the watch industry in general and that is the Rolex Submariner versus the Rolex Daytona. Okay, so let's dive straight into it. As with all my reviews, I like to start with the history. Uh, so let's start with the history of the Submariner. The Submariner was released back in 1953 and was released as like a professional dive watch. It was really seen as a tool, a proper professional tool back then. Um, and it was released in three variations initially. Two of them had 100 meter water resistance and then a third one had 180 meter water resistance. And then later on, a more professional version was released that featured 200 meter water resistance. And that 200 meter water resistance became the standard for a little while uh, before it then increased to 300 meters later on. It was one of the most important watches in the industry back then and has remained so even now. It's one of the most sought after Rolexes there are. Uh, sells well over list price um, and many places there are waiting lists for the standard steel uh, Submariner. When it was released back in the 50s, it was obviously extremely popular amongst divers. Uh, but it was also really popular amongst the general public because it offered people an option to wear uh, a watch every single day. Uh, whereas before people had dress watches and they were a little bit more delicate, you know, didn't really have any water resistance. They had much more delicate crowns and cases. Uh, the bracelet was a little bit more delicate as well. So for the standard consumer, there wasn't that many options for uh, more rugged watches that they could wear every single day. And then the Submariner was released and everyone loved it because it meant they had something that was much more harder wearing and meant they could just batter the watch and it wouldn't necessarily matter you know, if they dinked it. It wouldn't be the end of the world, uh, you know, wouldn't really affect it as much as if it was a nice dress watch in gold. And Rolex recognized the success of the watch not only amongst divers but also uh, just the general consumer and therefore they released a date version which was obviously more appropriate for the everyday wearer who wanted to wear it in the city or you know at their job it was useful to have that date function. Other features on the watch included a nice chunky bracelet, uh, much harder wearing than a dress watch bracelet, and it also featured a rotating bezel uh, for divers to be able to um, work out their ascent rates or ascent stops, and also work out how long they'd been underwater for. Now skip many years on to 2012, which is when we see the release of the 114060 reference that we're looking at here today. Uh, between uh, the 50s and 2012, many different variations of the Submariner were released and some of them were precious metals, bimetal options. We also saw the release of the super case version, which is like what we're looking at today, which is a much bigger, bulkier case, uh, wider lugs, etc. Uh, versus the more original Submariner designs. And the reason why I selected this Submariner for this review is because it's actually probably the most true to the original Submariner in the whole Rolex collection or current Rolex collection. And that is firstly because it's in steel, secondly because it features the black dial, and thirdly because it has no date. If you haven't seen my review of this 114060 uh, dubbed the Ultimate Submariner, then go check that out, because that'll give you some more in-depth history on the Submariner um, and also some more in-depth features of this watch. Okay, so now moving on to the Daytona. The Rolex Daytona was released back in 1963, so 10 years after the release of the Submariner. Uh, the watch was released around the hype of uh, Daytona Beach and the Daytona Racing, the track that is based in, uh, in Daytona, Florida. And Rolex released the watch basically for people to time racing. Um, it featured a tachymeter bezel, which meant that you could measure units per hour. So whether it's meters per hour, um, miles per hour, kilometers per hour, nautical miles per hour, you can measure it using that tachymeter. And the original reference released in 1963 was the reference 6239. Skip a few years on to the 1980s. Uh, between that time, we saw famous people like Paul Newman um, and some other celebrities wearing the Daytona. And Paul Newman is a big factor in making the Daytona famous because he wore a specific panda dial variation that is now dubbed the Paul Newman Daytona or a Paul Newman dial. So yeah, coming onto the 80s now, late 80s and specifically 1988, uh, Rolex released the reference 16520, which is kind of the more modern case style that we see nowadays or similar to the case style that we see now. Uh, that was a huge success and there were massive waiting lists even back then for that watch. Uh, and today there are still insane waiting lists for this watch. Uh, some places it's up to 12 years and actually several boutiques now will not even take your name down on a list. The Daytona is actually selling for double its retail price, depending on the dial, if you go for the white or black, 
uh, can be selling for up to £18,000 and sometimes a little bit over that as well. And then skipping another few years on, we saw the release of the 116520, which is the reference we're looking at today. And between now and back then when that watch was released, there's been a newer reference released, which is the 116500. And that is a newer version with a ceramic bezel and a couple dial changes. If you want to learn about that watch, then go check out my review of that piece. Uh, but today's review, we're just going to compare the older version. Okay, so let's go through some of the features on both of these watches. Um, and I'm going to start on the clasps on both. On the Daytona, we have a nice small little uh, oyster clasp. It's very standard for most of the Rolex watches to feature this oyster clasp. Um, it's nice and low profile, doesn't stick out too much from the bracelet. It's quite short as well. It's a very, very comfortable clasp. The underside of the clasp features this really nice smooth piece of metal uh, that fits on the wrist really nicely, doesn't pinch at all. I've always said it and I always will, uh, but the Rolex Oyster clasp is one of the best in the industry. Very, very reliable clasp and extremely hardy as well. It lasts a long, long time. And the Daytona features an easy link feature, which means the bracelet can expand by five mil uh, when you unfold the link, which is really useful, especially in the summer when your wrist expands a little bit or just on hot days, it's nice to be able to have that feature just to loosen it up a little bit. Next onto the Submariner. On the Submariner, we see a glide lock clasp, which is much bigger than the one on the Daytona. If you see them side by side now, you can see how much bigger the, the Submariner version is. And the reason why that is, is because the glide lock clasp was invented for divers to be able to use um, their watch over the top of their wetsuit but also be able to wear the watch for every day as well. So when they're just wearing it normally with a suit or you know a polo t-shirt, just on their bare wrist rather than over the top of a, a dive suit. So it means that you can expand and uh, contract the uh, size of the watch really easily without having to take out links. And it works by gliding along this uh, set of slats or little notches. Uh, and you lock the watch or the bracelet into that slot when you want to have the bracelet at that specific size. And it means you can basically always find the comfortable position for that watch. And I absolutely love this feature on this watch. Uh, I owned a Submariner before and I used to wear it a little bit on the bracelet and I used to use this uh, feature every single day. I just adjust it when I felt that my wrist was a little bit bigger or smaller. So the Submariner definitely wins here in terms of clasp. However, having said that, the Submariner clasp is much, much bigger and it makes it much more of a scratch magnet because it sticks out and protrudes much more uh, from the bracelet than the Daytona Oyster clasp does. It's also a much longer clasp, which means it takes up a majority of the bottom of your wrist, uh, which again, makes it even more of a scratch magnet. So that's something to bear in mind between the two of them. As useful as the Glide Lock clasp is, it's definitely more cumbersome and it's definitely more of a scratch magnet. Moving now on to the bracelets. Both watches feature the same bracelet, but just with a slightly different finish. Uh, they both feature the standard Oyster bracelet from Rolex. The Submariner features a full brushed finish bracelet, which obviously is because it's meant to be a tool watch. It's designed to be much more hardy um, and is not meant to look pretty. It's meant to just be there serving a purpose. It's also a satin matte finish so that when you're underwater and you are measuring something or checking the time on your watch for how long you have left for your dive, uh, the glare from the shiny parts or the polished center links don't glare back in your face from a reflection from the sun. So it's got purpose as well. It's not just to make it look different from the other watches in the collection. And then onto the Daytona. Uh, on this Daytona, we have a, a polished center link or an oyster bracelet with a polished center links. So it's got brushed outer links just like the Submariner, but the center links are polished. Uh, this creates a much more dressy look to the watch much more of a smarter, elegant look, much less of a tall uh, looking watch like we see on the Submariner. So for me, this is a hard one to choose between the two of them um, on this one because I like personally the more subtle look from the Submariner. The brushed finish is one of my favorite looks to a watch. That's why I love Audemars PA so much because a uh, majority of that Royal Oaks feature a full brushed bracelet. I think if I had to choose between the two of them, um, it's pretty difficult because it really depends on the watch. I think the Daytona really suits having this polished center link uh, bracelet, but of the two, I'd probably say I prefer the Submariner bracelet because it's just a little bit more subtle, a little bit more stealthy. Moving now on to the case of both these watches, uh, they are both 40 mil, but they wear very differently. Obviously the Submariner wears a lot larger because it's a much bigger case. Uh, the Daytona wears much truer to a 40 mil watch. It's much smaller. Um, the case is also full polished as well. Um, all around the case, all the lugs, the crown and the pushers, uh, the crown guards, the, even the tachymeter is polished. So it's definitely a more of a dressy look to this watch 
um, because of the polished accents on this piece. The Submariner features its ceramic bezel and uh, platinum inserts on this specific version and that makes this watch extremely hardy and again is perfect for its tool use or its utility use for diving. The aluminium and Bakelite and also the older plastic bezels uh, were quite susceptible to fading and ghosting. Uh, so now the ceramic will never fade, it will never go a lighter color due to UV exposure. Um, and now the platinum inlays inside the numbers and markers on the bezel I mean this watch won't tarnish as easily, it's going to last a little bit longer. Another great thing about ceramic is it's extremely scratch resistant, it's a very hard material and that means that this bezel won't scratch, it should look newer for much longer. The top angle of this case is all brushed, apart from the crown guards, they're all polished which I think is a really nice subtle accent there, it's not something you immediately notice on this watch. Uh, the sides of the watch, so the crown side and also the opposite side of the crown are polished. Of the two, which case do I prefer? I definitely have to say I prefer the Daytona. I prefer a smaller watch anyway, and I also prefer the more classic look from the Daytona's case. Um, it's definitely more elegant. Um, even though I don't like polished cases, I do much prefer this more classic dressy look that the Daytona has. Another thing that I prefer about the Daytona is the fact that the tachymeter has really small numbers. They're very fine print, uh, whereas the Submariner obviously has very big bold numbers, uh, which makes it look a little bit more sporty. Now coming on to the two dials. Uh, the dials are very different on these two watches. The Daytona dial is extremely busy compared to the Submariner dial. The Submariner is a very clean looking dial, especially on this 114060 reference, the no date sub. Um, it means it's even more cleaner and symmetrical than the other Submariners in the range. I like the maxi markers on the Submariner. It's also extremely legible because of those big hands and the black dial and also the big maxi markers. Uh, which means it's really good for people whose eyes aren't as good as they used to be. Uh, so lots of our older clients tend to go for watches like this because it means it's easier for them to see. Having said that though, I do love a chronograph and I love the way the Daytona is set up with those triple subdials. With the small seconds at six o'clock, uh, I think the dial again is really nice and symmetrical. It's a very pretty looking watch. I love the finer details on the Daytona. You don't get the same finer details on many of the other watches from Rolex. The Daytona has definitely got much prettier proportions and details. Okay, so who wins out of the dials? Um, that's a tough one, but I'd probably have to give it to the Daytona. I just prefer that slightly more busy, delicate and, and detailed dial look versus the much bigger, more obvious dial that the Submariner has. Uh, the important thing to remember between these two of them is the price difference. So the Submariner uh, retails at just under £6,000, uh, this specific model. And the Daytona, I'm just doing current retail prices, even though this Daytona is discontinued, I'm just going to use the current one. Uh, the Daytona retails at £9,550. Um, so the difference in retail is obviously quite significant between the two watches, but the difference becomes even more so uh, when you look aftermarket. Uh, so the Submariner sells for around seven to seven and a half thousand pounds aftermarket for an unworn one. And the uh, Daytona, if you can find an unworn version of this watch, this 116520, you could be looking at up to £20,000 for that watch. Um, really, if you're looking at a used one, you're looking in the region of £13,000 depending on the year. So there is a big difference between the two of them price-wise. Uh, do I feel the difference is justified? Probably not. Uh, the Daytona doesn't feel as solid and hardy as the, uh, the Submariner. The Submariner feels much more chunk chunky in some ways, it feels more expensive because of that extra weight. Um, whereas the Daytona, even though it is lighter and feels a little bit more uh, delicate, I really appreciate the more expensive look the Daytona has with those polished accents. If you look at them two side by side, you would definitely say that the Daytona is a more expensive looking watch. Okay, so overall, um, which do I prefer? This is the hard one because I own both, um, and so maybe I'm better equipped to give an opinion. I actually would say I prefer the Daytona, purely because I prefer smaller watches. Um, of the two of these two, I probably wouldn't wear the Submariner on the bracelet, whereas I would wear the Daytona on the bracelet. I just think the smaller size of the watch and the more streamlined clasp um, and the polished center links makes that watch suit the bracelet a little bit more so than the Submariner. The Submariner looks very chunky and big. However, I probably wouldn't go for this black dial. I'd probably go for the white dial version. I think that kind of suits the whole aesthetic of the watch a little bit better than the black dial. Um, but we have lots of clients who own this black dial and they absolutely love it. Um, I do 
really like the smarter look the black dial offers, but at the same time, I think the white uh, dial is a little bit more dynamic and goes with some more uh, looks and styles. So which of the two will I own? Definitely the Daytona. I love the Submariner. Um, I've owned two Submariners and I love them both. They are brilliant, brilliant watches, especially for everyday use. I wear mine on a strap and I absolutely love it. Um, it's a really cool look on the strap. It looks quite military and uh, bulky. It's just a fantastic everyday wearer, but the Daytona is an even better everyday wearer. So if I had the choice between the two, I'd choose the Daytona. I prefer its more versatile aspects. The fact it's dressier um, in some ways, it's actually a watch you can wear for any occasion. Uh, the Submariner can sometimes look too sporty to wear with a suit. Um, I'm sure a lot of people will argue with me on that one, uh, but the Daytona is definitely a more versatile watch. Uh, and for that reason, I think it would probably not come off my wrist very often. Uh, and that's why I'd probably go for the Daytona. Either way, you can't go wrong with either of these watches. Uh, so let us know in the comments which of the two you prefer. Thank you for watching our review. And if you're interested in either of these watches, then let us know our details in the description and also at the end of this video. If you'd like us to call one of these watches into stock for you, we can certainly do that. Occasionally we have uh, steel Rolexes in stock, but they tend to go out extremely quickly.